All right, how an empty S3 bucket can make your AWS bill explode. Okay, let's find out. Imagine you create an empty private AWS S3 bucket in a region of your preference. What will your AWS be the next morning? I would assume zero. Can, can we just assume zero? A few weeks ago, I began working on a proof of concept of a document indexing system for my client. I created a single S3 bucket in a EU West one. Well, there's your first problem. Communism mentioned, I mean, it's not going to work out. A uh, region and uploaded some files there for testing. Two days later, I checked my AWS billing page, primary to make or primarily to make sure that I was doing uh, what I was doing was well within the free tier limits. Apparently, it wasn't. My bill was over $1,300 with the billing console showing nearly that many puts. That's a lot of puts. A uh -huh, uh, 100 million puts uh, request executed within just one day. Dude, Virginia is all about it, man. Virginia and Ireland. Virginia and Ireland just all about that. Where were these requests coming from? By default, AWS doesn't log requests executed against your S3 buckets. However, such logs can be enabled using AWS CloudTrail or S3 server access logging. After, enable, after enabling CloudTrail logs, I immediately observed thousands of write requests originating from multiple accounts or entirely outside of AWS. But why would some third parties bombard my S3 bucket with unauthorized requests? Okay, okay. This is this is super strange, by the way. Do people like okay? Before even reading, is this like a whole is this like a whole thing where people will will attempt to just like find free storage on the internet and store stuff? I don't understand the purpose of it. It gets better. Okay, it gets better. Okay, okay. I'm just I'm just I, I didn't want to I didn't want to spoil it by just reading botnets. Yeah, no, like botnets. Um. I'm just trying to understand. I don't get it. Okay, anyways. But why would some third parties bombard my S3 bucket with unauthorized requests? Was it some kind of DDoS-like attack against my account, against AWS? What if, before even reading, what if AWS is the one secretly responsible for these botnets to make more money? I haven't even read completely ignorant to the situation, but think about it for a second. Think about the, th the 9,000 IQ conspiracy free money generator. This is the first free money generator ever to be discovered. Okay, best business model. Don't expose buckets to the world or else AW, I mean, bots will try to use them. Not even AW, I mean bots, for sure bots. Was it some kind of DDoS-like attack against my account, against AWS? As it turns out, one of the popular open source tools had a default configuration to store their backups in S3. And as a placeholder for a bucket name, they used the same name that I used for my bucket. This is so incredibly disappointing. I was hoping for AWS racketeering, but instead I got stupid. Would you do it like admin password? Uh, this meant that every deployment of this tool with default configuration values attempted to store its backups in my S3 bucket. Man, you, uh, how? I can't disclose the name of the tool I'm referring to, as it would put the impacted companies at risk of data leak, uh, as explained further. As a horde of misconfigured systems is attempting to store their data in my private S3 bucket, but, but why should I be the one paying for this mistake? Here's why. So this is super curious. S3 charges you for unauthorized incoming requests. This was confirmed in my exchange with AWS support, as they wrote, yes, S3 charges for unauthorized requests, 400 responses as well. That's expected behavior. That seems a little bit crazy. Searching the web for bucket names like they are domain names. That seems kind of wild. So if I were to open my terminal now and type in AWS S3 CP some file to your bucket, uh, I would receive an access denied error, but you would be the one to pay for the request. I don't even need an AWS account to do so. That can't be real. Okay, I don't, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one to jump on like the old, uh, the old capitalism is bad slash it's just greedy corporations as the answer. But this kind of sounds like greedy corporation, okay? That seems wild that they would charge for like, for someone trying to access your bucket that doesn't have permissions. The, the could is a beautiful thing, isn't it? I would receive, let's say, okay. Another question was bugging me. Why was over half my bill coming from US East 1 region, Virginia specifically? I didn't even have a single bucket there. The answer to that is that the S3 requests without a specific region default to US East 1 and are redirected as needed. And the bucket's owner pays for the extra for that redirected request. So you're telling me that if you knew of a company that you did not like and you happen to know and you're able to fish out an S3 bucket name, you could do a default region hitting a US East 1, pay for the redirect, and pay for the unauthorized access. And you don't even have to have an account. Wow. Okay.
I mean, the thing is, is you didn't actually put anything. I mean, I understand that you made a put request, an unauthorized request, but it didn't put anything. So how is that even a put? That's actually huge. Yeah, there's like a denial of wallet. That actually, that, I mean, that that is a full, not just denial of service. That's the denial of wallet. Like you could actually destroy and ruin somebody. Like imagine just a botnet. You could hire a botnet and botnet the shit out of just like if you were a disgruntled employee and you hated your work and your manager said something mean to you, you know, just imagine the 10,000 different situations that exist. All you have to do is just be like, you know what, fuck these guys. I'm going to go on the internet. I'm going to go pay $50 to a botnet to make 1 billion requests. And boom, you just got done charging them $13,000. I'll put my bots all up in your net. What? The security aspect. Now we understand why my S3 bucket was bombarded with millions of requests and why I ended up with a huge S3 bill. At that point, I had one more idea I wanted to explore. If all those misconfigured systems were attempting to back up their data into my S3 bucket, why not just let them do so? I opened my bucket for public rights and collected over 10 gigabytes within or 10 gigabytes of data within less than 30 seconds. Of course, I can't disclose whose data it was, but it left me amazed at how an innocent configuration oversight could lead to a dangerous data leak. Yeah, this is just, like, funny. Got my data now, baby. <laughs> Give me your data. Damn, they just grab. They, I mean, they literally grabbed that open source tool by the data, and now they got the datas. Man, this is so wild to me. This just seems so wild to me that you pay for unauthorized access. Well, everybody, don't forget to put a UUID in your name or put some sort of cloud front or do some sort of protective measure against your stuff getting leaked. Now, I mean, this is... This is crazy. Does this uh, does the data get uh, gets to AWS even if it's rejected? Like who pays for the bandwidth, man? Uh, other than deleting the bucket, there's nothing you can do to prevent it. You can't protect your bucket with services like CloudFront or WAF when it's being accessed directly through the S3 API. Standard S3 put requests are priced at just uh, point. What is that? A half of a cent per thousand requests, but a single machine can easily execute thousands of requests per second. That's how is this? How is this a thing? How is this a thing? This practice reduces vulnerability. Let's see. Uh, adding a random suffix to your bucket names can enhance security. This practice reduces vulnerability to misconfigured systems or intentional attacks, at least avoiding using short or common names for your S3 buckets. When executing a lot of requests to S3, make sure you explicitly specify the uh, AWS region. This way you avoid paying the additional cost of S3 API redirects. I know. I need a... Uh, dude, I know. You uh, uh, You know, if, if any Amazon... I mean... I wonder if Amazon actually has a couple S3 buckets available. The request is processed for uh, 400 or not. It doesn't matter. I know, but I would assume one would assume that they have something like some sort of layer in front of the actual request, right? That the incoming request comes in and says, are you authorized? Right. And when this thing's not authorized, it's like, yo, get the hell out of here. That's like a 400, right? 400 bad access or whatever it is. Like, I, one would assume before the actual storage process and everything, some sort of API gateway, exactly. Uh, like, this is not your bucket service. So it's not like they're actually putting anything. Name a bucket, man. All security is on you. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's pretty that's pretty unfortunate, honestly. I guess, I mean, UUID out your names. Uh, I reported my findings to the maintainers of the vulnerable open source tool. They quickly fixed the default configuration, although they can't fix the existing deployments. I notified the AWS security team. I suggested that they restrict the unfortunate S3 bucket name to protect their customers from unexpected charges and to protect the impacted companies from data leaks. But they were uh, unwilling to address misconfigurations of third-party products. I reported the issue to two companies whose data I found in my bucket. They did not respond to my emails, possibly considering them as spam. AWS was kind enough to cancel my S3 bill. However, they emphasized that this was uh, was done as an exception. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a hard time knowing. I, dude, I, I, I mean, I, I get the idea that, hey, it's your fault. AWS gives you the primitives. You use the primitives. If you misuse the primitives, you get charged. Like, I do understand that. Man, I have a hard time with that. I do have a hard time. Let's test it. I don't want to test it. I don't want to accidentally break any rules around here. But man, this this feels wrong. I guess this is a difference of could and should. And I get it's 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 within their rights to do this. But I feel like this is like should you allow this? It just feels like you you've allowed effectively the same thing with the Unity deal. Well, remember when Unity used to have downloads? And if you downloaded the thing, you'd get a direct charge. It was like, I forget what it was. It was $2 or so. It was, there was some percentage of charging that would occur per download of the runtime, meaning that someone could effectively do a denial of wallet by 
grabbing a bunch of downloads and just downloading over and over again an install fee and effectively bankrupt your company. And so you could uh, you could see the exact same thing is that if you know a bucket address, you just hit it a million times. And if it's if it's if it's a half cent per thousand, that'd be I mean that'd be a what what is that? That's a uh, that's a hundred thousand half cents. Right? I mean, it, it can get pricey really quick. You know that buckets uh, can be made private, right? You know that this was a pr- private AWS three bucket, right? Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, yeah, that the thing is, is that, that this 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 doesn't care that this is private. Okay, you just simply need you just simply need the address. If you have the address, you can just use the AWS tool, and you have an infinite charge glitch. Uh, what is a bucket? It's like a place to store stuff, right? Yeah, a negative infinite money glitch. Yeah, denial of, denial of wallets. Wow, this is actually really surprising. I'm actually really surprised that this is... I, I totally understand it, and I'm not trying to, like... I'm trying to come at it from, like, a smarter perspective, meaning that if you create... If, if everybody... The hard part is that if every if Amazon just simply forgives every stupid thing somebody does with their service, they would have so many stupid things, right? Can we just all agree that they can't forgive every stupid thing? Fair take, I would say, because I bet you the amount of misconfiguration, the amount of dumb things that people use Amazon with is just astronomical. Like the amount of dumb things I would do would be astronomical. But it, it does feel like if you're getting a ton of unauthorized requests, it does feel like there'd be some sort of like, hey, let's let's chat about this because this seems a little wild, right? This seems a little wild, and maybe we should. Uh, maybe you should do something. Hey, we're going to disable your bucket because you have no authorized request, and you only have unauthorized requests. I don't know. So- something, right? Like maybe there's something. I don't know. If, even if that sounds good, because that could be really, really bad. But still, like there, there has to be something out there. How would you? How would you prevent yourself from being charged if you can't use AWS or uh, CloudFront or any of these extra tools? Well, the, I mean, the reason why you can't is because you can just literally use AWS S3 copy over, and you just need the bucket address. So you have to do security through secure, uh, obscurity. Like that's the only potential option here, which is extremely insecure if you have a disgruntled employee. The flip is the guy that watches most of my content. Like it really is the 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 least. I mean, it's 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 at least a it's it's a great first measure of security. But anyone that doesn't like you, man, man, you know what I mean, man. Uh, was the request authorized? No, it's all unauthorized. It's all unauthorized. So for those that did it, for some odd reason are missing it, it's a private S3 bucket that just had an unfortunate naming, and it intersected with some open source tool. And the open source tool was also not specifying a region. It would go through US East and do a double charge, some sort of transit charge plus the actual access. Two buckets, one name. Exactly. All right. Well, hey, lesson learned. You probably need to be really smart about these things. And a staple principle uh, in security is avoiding security by obscurity. Yes. Yes, I would I would I would completely agree with this because it seems like this is just an easy way to get screwed because you only need someone to figure it out. Thank you, Arm. You're just, you're just amazing with your additions to this stream. All right, the name is the primogen. The the bucketogen, the private bucketogen. Hey, hey, you know what? Why don't you put your data in my private bucket? Denied, but still charged. 